Hi everybody, Steph here. Someone asked that I put up some of my JavaScript course videos, so I decided to do this. So here is chapter one, which is about 30 to 40 minutes of my beginner's JavaScript course, created just in 2015, beginning of 2016. So they're very much up to date. And even if you're watching this years from now, they will be very, very good to watch still because JavaScript on the basic level, on the beginner's level, is pretty stable. I assume for this course that you've done new programming before, so I take my time to cover some of the basic concepts very slowly, step by step. So if you've had trouble with other courses before, I'm pretty sure you'll be okay with my course. Because I'm moving these videos on YouTube, you have none of the interactivity, unfortunately, that you get with my training app, Studio Web, but nonetheless, there's still a lot to learn. So have fun, enjoy the material, be sure to take notes as you go along. You're gonna see little pop-up note takers appear in white in the videos. Those are little signals to you to take notes. Take notes because it's just gonna help you to learn this stuff that much more quickly. Enjoy the videos, bye. Hi, and welcome to Beginner's JavaScript. My name is Steph. JavaScript is the most popular programming language in the world today. And that's probably because JavaScript is built into every single web browser that's out there. So that includes Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Internet Explorer, everyone. You can also find JavaScript on every type of computer, Windows computers, Mac computers, Linux computers. You can find it on iOS devices, that's iPads and iPhones. You can find it on Android devices as well. JavaScript is everywhere. So it's a very important language to learn, especially if you want to get into web design and web app creation. Every single modern website these days uses JavaScript, and definitely every single web app will use JavaScript. Now, when I said that JavaScript is built into every browser, that means that there is a JavaScript app. The JavaScript app is there to process the JavaScript code that you write. So you need that app there to uh, process the code and to execute the commands. If you remember from your basic web design training, every computer language is just a set of instructions that the computers execute, that the computers follow. So with HTML and CSS, well, with HTML, for instance, that language is designed to tell web browsers what to put in a web page. JavaScript, on the other hand, is a true programming language. And what that means is that, is that JavaScript code can be used to tell web browsers how to do things in a page. It allows you to give your web pages and your websites decision-making capabilities. It can be easy decisions, like checking to see if somebody put in an email address properly in a form to very advanced programming where you can set up a whole game with JavaScript right inside a web browser. <laughs> to learn JavaScript, you should know basic web design. So that means HTML, CSS. You should know basic concepts like what a server is, domain names, hosting, that kind of stuff. If you got that, you're ready to learn JavaScript. One of the great things about learning JavaScript is that it's part of a large family of languages. So when you learn a concept or a technique in JavaScript, you will be learning that same concept in many different languages. So for example, in JavaScript, you have something called a variable. I won't get into what it is now. We'll learn about it in the, in the, uh, in the main course. But you also have variables in the Ruby language, in Python, in PHP, in Java, Java, and JavaScript are two different languages, by the way. So the point is, is that what you learn in this beginner's JavaScript course, a lot of stuff that you learn is going to be uh, very helpful in terms of all, in terms of you learning all these other languages. So you're going to be uh, an old expression. You're going to be killing many birds with one stone. And uh, yeah, because in the old days, you used to throw stones at birds and kill them. So if you're able to kill two birds with one one toss of your stone. Anyway, you get the idea. To work with JavaScript, all you need is a good web browser. I'm going to be using 
Google's Chrome. I think that's the best one today. And of course, you're free to use any web browser because, as I said, all the web browsers have the JavaScript engine built into it. And you can use whatever code editor that you like. I'm going to be using Sublime Text because it's very popular these days with the nerds. It's a pretty good code editor. And because I'm going to be doing my demos on Windows and some of my demos on Mac, Sublime Text is available on both of these types of computers. Again, use whatever code editor that you you are comfortable with. It's better that it supports JavaScript. And when a code editor supports JavaScript, that means is that it can read and understand JavaScript. So it can do those things like code completion and code coloring, these things that are helpful to, uh, to coding. And that's pretty much it. Welcome to the course. And uh, we'll give you my, my little learning tips. Uh, take your time. Uh, especially when you're learning to program for the first time, it can be a little frustrating. So you may not get something on Monday, but by Tuesday or Wednesday, the ideas, the concepts will sink in. And you'll slowly get it step by step. Uh, if I'm speaking too quickly in a video or too slowly, you can adjust the playback speed to suit whatever uh, is better for you. And finally, I would suggest that you uh, take out a pen and paper or whatever and write notes because writing notes is going to help you to remember. You may not need to review the notes later, but just the fact that you write them down the first time is going to help you to remember, and it's, uh, it's pretty useful. So uh, that's pretty much it. We'll talk soon. So in this video, we're going to look at some code. So I created a folder on my desktop called JavaScript and a pretty original name there. And what we want to do is look at chapter one, lesson four. And I've uh, written a bunch of code for you there just to make your lives easier. Well, to make my life easier. So here we go. Uh, chapter four, chapter one, lesson four, excuse me. So we've used the HTML5 doc type. So we're using the latest and greatest version of HTML. And you see I have an HTML comment, excuse me, an HTML comment. So for no particular reason. Well, there's a reason for it. JavaScript is simply called JS by the nerds. JS is short for JavaScript. I want you to see what comments are. I want to remind you of comments because we're going to learn about JavaScript comments in this video. So let's scroll down. You see we got a style block. Style, opening, closing. We've seen this before. Now I put this optional type text equals CSS. Reason for that. So let's look down here. You see I have a JavaScript block now. The JavaScript is very similar. It says uh, well, first of all, this is a bunch of JavaScript in here. We'll uh, ignore that for now. Let me just cut that out. You see, there's the opening JavaScript block, closing JavaScript block, just like CSS, opening style, closing style. Now, the old school JavaScript, you can um, script type equals text JavaScript, just like script uh, style type equals text CSS, CSS. Now, just like with CSS, with JavaScript, you don't have to put this in anymore. You can, because it's known today that if you're going to put in a scripting into uh, your pages, it's going to be JavaScript. Now, scripting is just another word, another way of saying programming. There is a little bit of a difference between a scripting language and a programming language. Um, it's not that important really these days. So um, this understands script is programming. So you're writing JavaScript. You're writing you know you're writing a JavaScript language now. Remember, uh, let me just put this back in. Java and JavaScript, let me write this down. Java is not equal to JavaScript. Now, you see this here? I'm teaching a little bit of programming, sneaking it in right now. So when you have the, uh, the exclamation point, the nerds will call that the bang operator, as in bang. Anyway, so um, why operator? Because it operates on, like a, like a surgeon operates on a patient. So anyway, so you got this uh, exclamation point, the bang operator, and equal. And this basically means not equal to, right? So this is saying Java is not equal to JavaScript. So that means that Java is not JavaScript. They're, in fact, two separate programming languages. Try to keep that in mind. 
Okay, so I've opened up Chapter 1, Lesson 5, and this will basically take us from where we left off in the previous video. First thing I want to talk about, uh, something I should have mentioned before, is that web pages, as you know, they, they, process, they are processed from the top down. So that means that this code will get processed, well, this is a comment, this code will get processed before this code and so on. And the same thing applies for JavaScript. If you go down here and you see we got our script block, this is some JavaScript, this is some JavaScript code. This code will get processed before this code. And uh, that will be something you have to consider when you're writing your JavaScript code later because sometimes you have to be sure that you have certain code in place before other code will work. Yada, yada, yada. It gets a little complex, but anyway, just keep in mind that the page loads from the top down. That's an important thing to know. Now, JavaScript can be inserted into the page a few ways. You can put it in the head of your document, as we've done here. You can also put it in the body. You've noticed I put some JavaScript down here. You see here I got the double slash. That is a JavaScript comment. And uh, so we've commented out this particular piece of JavaScript code. Now in JavaScript, if you want to comment out one line, you use double slash. Now this looks like it's on two lines, but that's just because we're doing word wrap. See, it's actually one line of code here. So I just wanted to point that out. If you want to do multi-line comments in JavaScript, you do slash star and you end it with star slash. And this is a multi-line JavaScript comment. Now it's all in blue now because the code editor here is uh, is showing us that this is commented out. Now if I do this, this will be uncommented and now we see this JavaScript code here. But before this gets processed, of course, all this JavaScript code will get processed beforehand. Keep that in mind when you're um, when you're writing a code. Sometimes you'll get bugs and you'll be wondering why something's not working. That's because sometimes it's because the order of your code will play a role in this. Okay, let's actually run some JavaScript code since we got a bit of it in here. So I got some code down here. This is a little bit complex, so I'm going to just comment this out for now, and we'll get back to this later. But oh yeah, there's another way to add JavaScript code. You can add it like this, kind of like when you add your CSS external style sheets. You do with JavaScript like this. You have a script, and you got the closing script, and you just can use the SRC attribute, which is short for source, and you can point to an external JS file. .js means .javascript. So you can put all your scripts in here if you wanted to, well, in an external sheet. I haven't done it here because, in this example, because, you know, I just want to show you quickly how to learn, uh, how, to, how to write JavaScript, so I'm taking it easy right now. But keep in mind that this is another way, is one of the three ways that you can add JavaScript to your pages. If you're doing a lot of professional work where you got really big scripts, lots of JavaScript that you're writing, you definitely want to be putting it into an external JavaScript file like this. But uh, for our simple examples, I'm just going to keep the JavaScript right in the page as we've done. Okay, let's look at our very first bit of JavaScript code. So I scroll down here to our script block, and you notice here I get the two slashes and some text. Now this is a JavaScript comment, as I said in a previous video. When you have two slashes, that's a JavaScript comment. It's a single line comment, meaning that the comment will work on one line. Now if you want to comment out many lines, what you do is you go slash star, and then you close it with star slash. So now these are all commented out, and what that means is that the browser will ignore this code. Now we've seen this before, so let me just go back and comment this line here. There we go. And you can see that the text is turning blue when it's commented out. So here we go, some JavaScript code right here. Now this is something called alert. Alert is something that is built into JavaScript, built right into the JavaScript language, and of course the JavaScript app. Now alert is an example of something called a function. Now if you look here, I've uh, written it out for you. Alert is a function. Function is short for functionality. 
So you can think of functions as being little chunks of code that uh, are kind of like mini apps inside of the JavaScript app. And these mini apps provide some sort of functionality. They do something for you. So alert is actually one of the very first functions that I've ever used. And what it does, it creates a little pop-up box. Let me show you what it does. So we're going to refresh the page. And there it is, JavaScript alert. Now, the box is empty, kind of useless, but we're going to fix that now. So you know this is a function because, well, now you know what alert is. You see this. This is like one of these special keywords in the JavaScript language. You have to remember, a keyword in coding is a word that has special meaning in the uh, particular coding language. So in the case of JavaScript, alert has a very special meaning. And the JavaScript engine, the JavaScript language knows what it is, of course. And as I said, JavaScript is a function because it does something. It provides functionality. Now, you as a nerd, a new nerd programmer, can identify, can see what code is a function by, well, first of all, you're, you'll know that alert is a function because you know it now. But also, you can tell by these two little round brackets. If you got a word followed by these two little round brackets, that's a function. So let's add a little bit to this function. Now alert can do more than just pop up a box. It can actually send message. So I'll say send, I'll just write uh, send message. Well, send message, display a message. So um, I'll change that to display. It's not really not, it's not really sending it, it's displaying it, display message. So now let's refresh, display message, right? So that's what alert does. Now this runs because this alert box runs because JavaScript starts reading, excuse me, the web browser starts reading from the top and it works its way down. And when it reaches this code, it displays it. Now you notice at the end of our function, the alert function, we have this little semicolon here. Just like CSS, this is the end of this function. So let me show you what I mean. So I put another one in, display message two. Now let me refresh. Display message, display message two. So you see how we fired off two functions, right? Basically sending the web browser two commands. Now watch what happens. I take off this semicolon here. We're going to get an error because this semicolon, excuse me, tells JavaScript this is the end of this function, this is the beginning, this is the, this is the start of this function. So we need that separator between our function calls. You see, when you use a function like this, nerds will say you're calling a function. It's kind of like you're calling up your buddy. Uh, yeah, so watch what happens. I save that. See, nothing happens. It's broken. And you know, the reason it's broken because JavaScript, JavaScript had a problem with our code because we didn't put the semicolon here. Now, we didn't see anything because we didn't tell JavaScript to display an error. We can do that if you go into your web browser, you right click, you go um, view, no, 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 inspect element. That's one way to do it. And you see here, that's uh, one error. Uncaught syntax error, un an unexpected identifier. So this is JavaScript telling us that, okay, we did have an error. So this is where the development tools in the uh, developer tools in our web browsers can help us out, especially when we are working with our JavaScript trying to figure out what's going on. Now I can solve that problem by just putting the semicolon back in, reload the page, you see the error doesn't appear and our JavaScript alerts appear. As we learn more about JavaScript, we're going to work more with the developer tools here so that we can look at our errors and check them out. You have to understand something. When you are writing code, especially when you're starting to get into programming like JavaScript, there's always errors that are going to happen. So it's very important that you start understanding the error codes and you start understanding what the errors are telling you. But uh, we'll get into that. All right, I've opened up Chapter 1, Lesson 7. And um, yeah, so, so here we go. We've seen this before. We got our two alerts. And we separated our alerts with the uh, semicolon. So JavaScript knew this was the end of this function. This is the next function. So I'm going to get rid of this because it's annoying to have two alerts. I'm going to show you another built-in function into JavaScript, something called prompt. 
and you see very similar format. Well, exactly the same, well, not exactly the same. So you got uh, alert and you got the two round brackets and the message that the alert box will display. And then we end this function and call. This is a function call. And well, I say it's a function call because we're calling this function. We're saying to JavaScript, please use this alert function. Here's a new function, it's called prompt. And it's very similar. You got our opening and closing brackets. And here is the uh, information that we're sending to the prompt uh, function. So this little section of information that we're sending, so with alert, we sent this information. We told alert, this, you know, display this text here, which says display message. Now, when you're sending messages or information to a function like this, this is called sending arguments. It's like making an argument for your position. You know, when you get into an argument with somebody, you're trying to explain something to them, and you know, do this, do this. So this is in programming lingo, programming talk, nerd talk. They're saying we're sending an argument to our function, or they'll just say, the nerds will just say, this is the arguments for the function. Now, some functions will require that you add arguments, some won't. Some will have one argument like this, some other functions like prompt will have multiple arguments. Argument number one, and you see the, uh, the um, comma here, that separates the arguments, and this is argument number two. Now, sometimes the arguments will be text like this, sometimes will be other things. So for now, just understand that uh, in between these two brackets, you got your arguments, and the arguments send the function extra information. In the case of alert, uh, it tells the alert box what to display. And in prompt, it tells the prompt box, which we're going to see in about two seconds, not only what to display, but to, there's two places where it displays things. So we'll, we'll just take a look and we'll see how it works. Let's refresh. So we got our alert, right? Uh, display message. Okay. Now here's our prompt box. Now the prompt box, it's kind of like an alert, except it allows you to enter a box where somebody can enter in information. And you could take that information to, uh, maybe this could be like an automatic sign-up form where you say, hey, please enter your, uh, your username, something like that. And uh, yeah, you see now this text here, please enter your name. This corresponds to this here. And then you see the second text, your name. Here it is, your name. And that corresponds to, uh, to this argument here. So I'm just going to go OK. Now, there's a lot you can do. So let me just uh, say, let me just enter name like this so you can see the difference. Refresh, display message, and now it's just name. So there we go. We've learned a little bit more about functions. You learned about arguments, right? Where you can send the function instructions in terms of what to do. And different functions will have different types of arguments that you can send, and you got to learn the functions. One of the things you can do with your knowledge of functions is actually build your own functions. And why would you want to build your own functions? Because functions allow you to put all kinds of code, all kinds of JavaScript code, into a nice package. That package is the function, so that you can use this function over and over and over again. It's very powerful, and uh, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to do some basic functions. All right, we're in chapter one, lesson eight. So what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, learn a couple things. First, we're going to create our very own function. And you do that using the function keyword. Now, when JavaScript sees the word function, it knows you're creating a function. So then we're going to go function. We're going to give it a name. I'm just going to call it call it, right? And there's our basic function. Let's make some space here. And yeah, so next thing we need is we need the two curly brackets. And what's, you know, I call it curly because it's got little pointy brackets there. They're kind of like curls. So a function starts with the keyword function. This is when we're creating our own function. Then we give it a name. We can call it whatever name we want. You know, I just choose to, uh, I just decide to call, call it. Now, I, when you're creating functions in JavaScript, the convention, the way you're supposed to do it, you start with lowercase, and then in between words, you use a capital. So if your function was called my function, you see how it is, lowercase m, 
uppercase F. It just makes it easier to, to read as well. Let me just go back to call it for whatever reasons. And then, of course, I got my little curly braces. No, excuse me, my round braces. And in here, I can do all kinds of stuff, but for now, we'll just leave it like this. So here is a basic function. Keyword function tells JavaScript we're creating a function. And then I say, uh, call it. So what we're going to do here now is I'm going to take these two other functions and I'm going to stick it into our custom function. So what's cool is that you've just learned that you can put functions inside of functions besides a whole bunch of other things. So now uh, we have the function. Let's uh, reload the page. And you notice this time our alert and our prompt did not load automatically, right? Because what happens when you put code inside of a function, that code will not activate until you actually call this function, until you activate the function itself, this new function. Now, uh, I called it call it, but you, you know, let's, I'm going to change it to my function so I don't confuse you. So let me say that again. This code here, the code inside of our function, will not activate until we call this function. And the function's name is my function. And uh, that's how JavaScript works. It's, it's kind of cool. Whereas remember, when we had our, our function alert and prompt, when we had it outside, just like this, in, outside of any function, just you know, right in the script tags, it automatically launched. Now, if we refresh, watch. See, they automatically launch, right? But if we, we only have it inside of our function, it will not launch. When we refresh, see, it doesn't launch. Now, to activate this code, we have to call the function. So there's many ways to do that. One way to do that in, in JavaScript is to use something called onClick. So let me scroll down here. you see our button. We have the button here, the Try button. And you see onClick. So we have the onClick tag attribute. And this is called an event handler. Let me uh, put that in a comment so it's uh, easy to read. So we call that an event handler. And JavaScript has many event handlers. You got on click, on mouse over. And this basically allows you to capture to see if certain events happen. So in this case, this event is just to see if somebody clicks on this button, and the button is uh, right here. Well, you see it right here in the web page. If somebody clicks on this button, you do this here. So we're going to say call my function. So you see that's our function up here. So it says, this code says on click equals, and you got our quotes, open closing, and we're gonna say on click my function. So when we translate that, it's on click use this function here. And that's the function that we created up here. So let's reload the page. So I'm gonna click the try it function. There we go, here's our alert. Okay, and here is our JavaScript prompt. So there we go. We've learned a few things. We learned about event handlers. We learned about one of them called onClick. And we applied it directly to our button here. And we learned how to create our own custom functions. And we learned that you can actually add other functions inside of functions. And the whole point of creating functions is to be able to chunk up your code, to, pack, to package up your JavaScript code into neat little packages so that you can organize it better and you can reuse it over and over again because now we can use this code all over the place. We could put on click, I'll put it somewhere else. Let's say put it on this first paragraph here. So I'm going to say on click of the paragraph, call my function. So watch this, I refresh. So first we have it here, okay, okay. Now let's click on the first paragraph. There we go, okay, okay. Now this paragraph, see I didn't put it on click here so it doesn't work, but on this one, let me click it again, it works. So you see how we can now use this code here. We can apply it to a button. We can apply it to our paragraph. And we apply this code. We activate the function code using onClick event handlers. There are other event handlers as well. We can go on mouse over. Save that. Refresh. Now watch this. I'm, just, I'm not even going to click. See, I just move my mouse over and it activates it. 
All right, I've opened up to chapter one, lesson nine. We're going to continue learning about functions. And um, yeah, so let's pretend we wanted to identify when somebody clicked on this button here or somebody uh, clicked on this uh, paragraph. So let me, first of all, change this event handler back to an on click. And so how do we do that? Well, we could send a message one way. There's better ways to do it, but we'll, we'll do it this way, the old fashioned way first. We can send a message to our function here and then have that message displayed to us in our alerts and our prompt. So how do we send that message? Well, first of all, we have to change the basic way our function works. And we do that because we're nerd coders here and we can do that. So we're going to say my function has, uh, we'll have a something called an argument message. So what does this say? This says to us now that our function now wants an argument. Remember, an argument is whatever you put in between these brackets when the function is called. This is a function call. Remember, we're calling the function here. We're using it here. But here, we're creating the function. So when you create the function, you have to tell a JavaScript that you want a, 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 some uh, arguments uh, used in your uh, function. So. Right here, we're saying we need a message. So we're going to do that now. So what we're going to do with this message. So we get a message sent to us. And we'll do that here. We'll go to my function. We'll send a message. And it's going to be a button. All right? You'll see it in a second. I know it's complex. We'll see it in a second. And I'll say this message is um, paragraph. There we go. So now our function call, because we're calling the function here, right? We're saying, okay, we're sending the message of a paragraph. Now, well, well, let me explain something here. Uh, first of all, when you're calling a function, I know there's a lot of complexity, a lot of complex stuff here. When you have on click, you notice we have to put it in between the uh, double quotes. If you're sending an argument, a message, and, and you got to put in quotes, in JavaScript, you got you can't use double quotes inside of double quotes. You have to use single quotes inside of double quotes. Now the the code editor is giving me trouble here. Let me just fix that. All right, there we go. So you have to do that. Notice I got double quotes, and inside double quotes I have single quotes around paragraphs. So I'm going to do that here as well. Okay, that should work. That's a general rule of JavaScript. If you have something surround, if you have quotes surrounding another set of quotes, you should make the outside double quotes, the inside single quotes. Otherwise, you're going to have some problems. So, uh, well, let's first test that. I'm going to load this page up in the browser. Okay, uh, on click. Okay, okay. So I, I clicked it. Try again. All right. So, okay, it's working so far. But we're not getting any message because the message we want to have is uh, the uh, word paragraph. And uh, so how do we display that in our alert? In this case, well, it would be paragraph and it would be, well, this would be, uh, this shouldn't be paragraph. This should be actually a uh, button. Button. So we'll do that in our function code here. Now we created a function. So we want to add this message to uh, what's going on in here. So we do that like this. We go like this. I'm going to say plus add the message. We'll do that here. Plus add the message. So we're taking this message and we're placing it inside of our function here. Um, yeah, let's just see what it looks like first of all and I'll explain a little bit more. So let's try it. See? Message button. Since we clicked on the button, that's, that's what we get. Button, okay button, right? Now if we click on our paragraph, paragraph, paragraph. You see that? Now let me make this a little bit more clear. And you, I'll say you clicked on, you clicked on, and that would be that. And uh, yeah, that'd be good. So yeah, so let's uh, save that, refresh. You clicked on button. Not a prompt. See, we put it right after name. So you name dot dot button because we clicked on the button. You know, let's make that uh, 
you clicked on there we go message so let's see how that looks refresh you clicked on button you clicked on button okay now let's click on the paragraph you clicked on paragraph you clicked on paragraph so there you go so we learned a few things here we learned that we can we can tell it if we want to uh receive arguments or messages from uh, when it's called, when this function is called. And remember, when you're calling a function is when you're using a function, right? So uh, that's what we did here. Let me just expand this so it's all on one line. It's clear. So when we, because we added this uh, request for uh, an argument, basically we were saying here when we create our function, okay, let's, let's uh, accept a message. So when we called our function, which we called my function, we sent the message. We sent the message. First one was button. Second message was paragraph. So uh, not bad. We're learning. We're learning. All right. So we're moving along here. We're learning. We're learning. So we've already checked out two event handlers. We saw on click and on mouse over. And there's many others. In this particular lesson, I want to look at a new event handler, something called on load. And I also want to create a new function, our new custom function. And, uh, you know, while creating a function, we'll learn a little bit more. So uh, let's jump into some code. I'm now on chapter 1-lesson10.html. Let me scroll up. So, uh, yeah. So let's look at a new event handler, something called onload. So typically, you would put onload on the body tag. And the onload is for when the page loads, when you know, on loading of the page. So load, uh, load func. I'll call it load func. And uh, yeah, that's the function we're going to load. So now let's create our own custom function, load func. So we're going to go function. That's the keyword that tells JavaScript that we're creating a new function. We'll call it load func. And we're going to have our open and closing curly braces opening and closing curly braces. This is the beginning of the function. It's the end, so all this, whatever is in between this will be processed as uh, part of this function. So what can we do here? I don't know. Uh, well, we can just uh, alert something out. We can go alert, and uh, what do we want to alert out? We're going to alert a message, uh, something really obvious. The page has loaded. So there we go. So we got a, a simple function. The page has loaded. So let's scroll down a little bit. So look at here. So it says unload, do this. So on the page load, do this. And what do we do? We run this function. Now we created this function. Now JavaScript knows we're creating a function because we start with the keyword function. We call it load function. Then we put a little curly brace, or, or little round brackets rather. And, uh, and we just say alert do this. Now we could do a whole bunch of different things, which we'll learn how to do very soon. But um, yeah, so that's it. What's this event handler? So oh, that's from the last lesson. Let me just delete that. So uh, let's just load the page, see how it looks. And here it is. The page has loaded, right? Pretty good, right? And see, it's still spinning. That means it's waiting for us to AOK -okay it, and then it will complete the load of the page. Pretty, pretty cool. So let me just get this into view so that when we load it again next time, it will look pretty good. So yeah, not bad, not bad. Okay, so this is pretty uh, standard stuff. So let's display something a little bit more interesting inside of our alert. So JavaScript has a date function. And uh, so let's just display the date. And uh, we'll, we'll give it that plus. So let me break this down. So we have a date function in JavaScript. And uh, to use it, you have to set, you have to start with the keyword new date. And I'll get into the details later. But all you need to know now is when you add new date, you're just telling JavaScript to display the date. And of course, I'm using the plus sign to add it to this, uh, to this uh, string of text. They call it a string of text because, it, you know, one, one piece of text, next piece of text, next piece of text, and strings along. And that's why it's called a string of text. Nerds would just simply call this a string and they'll say, let's add a new string to the alert box. And they're just talking about adding text. 
Now remember, when you're adding text that is uh, displayed as text in JavaScript, whether it be in alert boxes or prompts, you need in elsewhere, you need to put your string of text inside of quotes like that. Otherwise, it will be treated as something else. We'll get into that later. All you need to know, if you want to add text to your JavaScript, you have to put it inside of quotes. Uh, typically use double, but you can use single quotes too. And now what we want to do is we want to add the date here. And we're using this plus. So we add this string of text and we say also add the date. And this is going to write out the date to uh, our alert. So let me just view this. I saved it, open a browser, and look at that. There it is. This page loaded Friday, September 4th, 2015. This is, you know, Eastern Daylight Team. This is a very long date format, right? We'll get into that later, but uh, there you go. So we've added our date. I'm just going to get rid of this stuff. And uh, not bad. Now, I was going to teach you something else, but I think we'll stop right here and we'll get into the, the next part of this lesson in the next uh, video lesson. All right, we're back. So uh, let me scroll up here again. So we see that we've created our two custom function. The first custom function was called my function. The second custom function was called load func. And uh, you know we're creating functions because we use the special function keyword here to say to JavaScript, we're going to create a function. We're going to call it my function. And in between the curly braces is all the, all the code that's part of this function. You see, now we can use this function in multiple places in our page as we did down here. We called it on the button, on the click on the button, and we called it here on the click on the paragraph as well. When I'm talking about the on click, I'm talking about this event handler on click, this event handler here on click. We also learned about the event handler on load, which is usually applied to the body tag, which you could apply it anywhere, I suppose, but the body is where you, a lot of times you put this in. Remember, when the page loads, it always starts at the top, starting with the doc type, and it starts loading its way down. So sometimes this order of loading is very important that you keep in mind. So for instance, let me give you an example. Let's say on the body, you say on load, load, load func, right? So you're saying load this function, on load. But if you didn't create this function, you would get an error. So let me just comment this out. Let me give you an idea. So we're going to go multi-line comment. So now this code, of course, because it's in a comment, is ignored. So even though we're telling the body to load the load func function when the page loads, it won't be able to find it because we commented it out. So let's watch what happens. Open in browser. See, nothing happens, nothing loads, but there's an error. Now, we know it's an error because if we go to our uh, developer tools, more tools, developer tools, let's actually let's bring it out here so you can see it. More tools, developer tools, or you just control shift I, which I will do from now on. And here comes the developer tools. And you see here, little red square, well, red circle with an X, says we have an error. And if you look here, here's the error, console. And if you don't see your console, just click on, uh, you can pop it up like this, or you can just click on it. And it says here, uncaught reference error. Load function is not defined. So it's saying the load func is not defined. When you define something, that means you, you, you create it. To define something is to create it or to describe it. So all the JavaScript error here is telling us is that it can't find the load func. See? And and see, it's because we're trying to call it here on load, load func. But since it can't find it because we've commented it out, well, it can't find it. So when it can't find it, it stops the scripts in the page and nothing works, right? So this is where it makes sense to start looking at errors that your JavaScript code will produce so you can start understanding them a bit better and it will help you to learn how to code better, whether it be with JavaScript or any other coding language or programming language. So errors are your friends. So let me just go back. Now I'm going to uncomment this. So now all of a sudden load func appears and it's going to work. Let me just load it up. See, it works, loads up. In this video, we're going to take a little bit of a break from code, and I want to remind you of the JavaScript DOM. 
and I want to get a little bit deeper into it. I first talked about it a little bit in the CSS course where I talked about the hierarchy of tags, how there were parent tags and grandparent tags and child tags. And if you remember with CSS, we had the nth child selector and stuff like that. And we also had the rule of specificity, how if you had a more specific rule in your CSS, that rule would override less specific rules. Anyway, this all has to do with the JavaScript DOM and the JavaScript DOM becomes much more important now that we're getting into JavaScript. And that's because you're going to use JavaScript to be able to navigate through your web page, to go into tags, remove tags, add new tags, insert text into paragraphs, change text that are in paragraphs or headers or whatever. So this is all about the DOM, the document object models. DOM is short for document object model. And how, you know, understanding the DOM is very important because when we get into the JavaScript that works with the DOM, you know, kind of makes sense that you understand the DOM. So let me back up. DOM is short for Document Object Model, and it's a virtual map or a model of a web page. Uh, why do they call it a model? You can think of like a, a model airplane where engineers would create a little model airplane or a model ship or something. And so to check out their designs and make sure it would work good before they would build the big real airplane, you know, because building a small model is a lot quicker and easier and cheaper. So the document object model, now document means the web page. A document is a web page. Object, now the object, well, you know, I'm going to explain to you in a very simple way. See all the tags in the page? You got your body tag, H1 tags. You, the browser considers these as being little mini objects, little mini things that you can move around and change and stuff. So anyway, don't worry about objects right now. But model, the M in DOM could be model or map. So you can also look at this as the map of the tags in the web page. This is what it is. So let's look at this diagram that I created for you. And you see on the right hand side, you see a, a typical web page. You got your HTML tags and so on. And you got... In gray, you got this big gray box, which is basically wraps around the body portion of the web page. And you see the arrow I point to this little diagram here, this tree on the left. And you see that the body is in gray, and you see all these, these little boxes here, and this map here is all in gray. So what I'm trying to show you here is that all these subtags here, H1, P, U, L, L, Is, these are all subtags of the body. Or you can say, in other words, they're all children of the body tags. So H1, P, and UL, they're all children of body. Now, if you look at our code here, you see that body wraps around the H1, the P, ULs, and the LIs. So the, the body is the parent of all these tags because it wraps around these tags. Now, if you look on top, you got the head. Even though the head is on top of body, the head is not the parent of body because body is not inside of the head tags. It's sitting beside the head tags. Look at the map here. Look at our diagram. You see head is sitting beside body. You can look at the head section of the page as being the brother or the sister of body, right? And you can look at HTML here, the HTML tag right here, the big HTML tag. I called it the, the mother of all tags. See, the HTML tag is the parent of, of head and body, and of course, HTML is a grandparent of H1, P, and UL, and also meta title. Why? Because if H1's parent is body, and body's parent is, is HTML, that means H, H1 is, of course, the grandchild of HTML, just like your father's father is your grandfather, if that makes sense. So why am I talking about fathers, bodies, parents, models, all this kind of stuff? Because, again, when we get a little further into the course, we're going to learn about built-in JavaScript functions. We just learned about functions like alert, prompt. There's many others, but there are specific functions in JavaScript that allow you to jump around, to navigate this map, and to be able to go in there and you might change the text inside of this paragraph using JavaScript. So somebody may click on the button and you can load in different text, or you can add a list item to this list and a whole bunch of other things. And DOM manipulation, manipulation, another word for manipula manipulation is changing things. DOM, DOM, D-O-M, manipulation, that is the basis of a lot of games in, and uh, a lot of apps in uh, 
well, that you see online. So using the JavaScript DOM and using JavaScript, you can transform a website into a web app because you can change things on the fly depending on what's happening. So um, there you go. I hope this makes sense.